All right, what's up? Welcome to day two hundred and so of making Songbringer. And um, today I'm going to be working on this subterranean entrance into the dungeon. I got all the logic fixed, so you can ride elevators up. Arcane, you're the first. What's up, man? First. Just started. So you can ride elevators upwards. Ride them back down. What's up, Mars of Power? Canon is amazing. Elect Alex Pita. What up, all y'all? Bam. And yeah, the logic works for going down elevators too, so you can go down to um, to the, the subterranean entrance down here. So today's uh, video is going to be about fixing up the area in this cave here, so it's just cooler. We'll have some uh, you know, some abyss, some clouds, and stuff. Yeah, so this, we're going to put some abyss over here with some fogginess over there too. And this area is going to be kind of special. It's just going to be kind of one platform. And then, yeah, so you can ride these elevators going down. So this is now a subterranean level. That's basically it. That's what I'll be working on today. It might be kind of a short stream. I'm kind of sleepy today, so... Hopefully we can crack out these abysses quickly. Oh yeah, I haven't worked on the statue. Yeah, I haven't worked on that yet. Or anymore since yesterday. I've working on other bugs and stuff. Thankfully I finally got my um my list to do, my idea the ideas list and all the bugs list, all of that's organized. So I prioritized it all and stuff, and I started working on the highest priority items because the next two weeks are all going to be about fixing bugs um, to get ready for the alpha release and stuff. So yeah, she hasn't been. I haven't worked on her graphics yet at all, but if there's time on the stream, I'll get to that, and then. But we'll start with this. Oh, nice. Oh, you like that feeling? Finally solved it. Right on. Yeah, there will definitely be some more enemies. Let's do some harpies for sure. Oh, you found a workaround? Oh. Well, at least you found a workaround. Okay, so this area is going to need a different kind of pattern. Damn. Oh, I know how you feel, man. Those kind of days. Oh, what happened there? Hmm. Okay, so we need two. Well, we might need two patterns for this. One pattern we'll put. Um, one will be like a level entrance pattern, and the other next one will be like the other pattern. Yeah, I guess we need two. Ah. That's crazy. I hate it. I hate those kind of bugs when things are totally random. You have no clue why. What should I call this? Jeez. Don't use scroll views? <laughs> Sounds like a good one. Uh. Hmm. 
Whatever. Cave to level. Cave to level it is. So we're going to look for pattern cave. Now, if area pause.z is less than k sword z and area pause.z is greater than or equal to k sword z minus k world num levels minus one which would be okay if we got the ninth level that's going to be negative 10 minus 9 negative 19 minus 1 is negative 20 I believe that's right for for the sword z being 10 so this would be pattern cave to level all right so we've got this set up for special patterns for these level entrances here yeah you got plus one points for momir bam All right, next up, let's do a pattern for these pattern cave to level. Now we shouldn't need any of this stuff anymore. <laughs> right? What's a piece of code I've written for this game that I'm most proud of? And why? Hmm. Code? I don't know. I guess I'm not as really as proud of the code as I am of the art because I'm such a new artist. But I guess I would say if I had to pick pick a piece of code, it would be the shaders. I don't know. The shaders are really tricky for me and hard for me to develop. So they're also kind of my secret sauce. I've never really showed a couple of these shaders on the live stream before. So. I guess those would, that would be I'm most proud of because I'm, they're so difficult to write and they're um, and they turned out to be so beautiful. Yeah, shaders, multiple. All right, so that'll go back and that'll do the entrance. Yeah, right? Yeah, that is kind of... Uh-huh, I hear you on that. I totally hear you on that. C-sharp's kind of nice about how they do that. I think you write everything in one file, right? In C-sharp. Technically, in C++, you could put everything in the header, but that's kind of inefficient because of the, the ancient way that H's and CPPs work. Technically, from the compiler's point perspective, though, the H and the CPP are actually quite nice for the compiler. Okay, so now let's do a pattern. We don't need the sword. We don't even need these edges. I guess we can keep the lights for now. Um, I've got a, well, let's just do a straight up rectangle. Um, lowest area with exit to overworld. This is if area pause dot y equals zero. Then we're going to do a rectangle strip of land yeah there is a reason for it that's that's one reason from sort of a um, 
from a programmer's perspective, but from the compiler's perspective. I read this on Stack Overflow a long time. I think I'm going to try and just find this article. Here, here we go. Why does C++ need a separate header file? <clears throat> See, it's, it's mostly to improve build times for the compiler. So here's here's something that kind of helps you with might help with that. I think I read a different article. Here's a, maybe this one. No, that other one was better. Ah. So let's do that strip of land, get a good for loop going. Emails. I started finally emailing people about um, getting their names in the credits. Everybody that's pre-ordered the game since the Kickstarter, I emailed everybody. So I've been getting lots of emails back from people. Thanks, people. Thanks for replying. I can't wait to put your names in the in. I got you all in a little database, and then I'll eventually put you in this backers.txt before the next release. Everybody's names in here. So thanks everybody for pre-ordering. Appreciate it. Helps helps every little bit helps make this game a little bit better before it gets released. So I can push that release date back just a few weeks at a time there. What's up, defense? Welcome to the stream today. So let's do the width of the strip of land. Strip width. Three. Strip radius. Strip radius is three. W2 minus strip radius. H is less than or equal to W2 plus strip radius X plus plus this. Oh, we want to do everything but that. Dope. So that's just going to be the, this regular loop. X, X, W, X. Uh, sorry, I'm I've kind of lost my place here in this this little thread here, but I hope that link helped. Let's do the x delta from the from the center. That's going to be abs of x minus w two. So if x two or no, yeah, x d x delta if x delta less than or equal to strip radius. No, no, if it's greater than strip radius. And we set this to a sky tile. Set tile x, y, k, sky tile, k tile sky. Oh, there. So now we got that. Um, let's see if that works for, basically this is only gonna work for one of the areas. Let's see if it works. Yeah, I, I keep the same scene. No, no, I don't. E I don't even use custom transitions. I just I keep the same scene the entire time. Coco's two DX scene transitions are just not cool. They just they're not going to work right for this game. Okay, looks like we're totally missing everything here. That didn't work, obviously. Why didn't you work? Pattern cave to lake. Yeah, it's just one scene. Everything's custom with the transitions. Um, okay, cool. We're hitting this method here. And this area pause is 0, 0, negative 11. So that should work. And the strip radius is 3. Okay. 
What's up with this? This should work. Yeah, it's setting the K tile sky right there. Oh, you know what? It might be K tile sky that's messed up. Oh yeah. I mean, they're cool for most for the most basic games. You know, most games are are totally cool using Co Coco Studio X's transitions between scenes. But for your advanced games and for games that are really they're totally custom, you, you're just better off writing your own stuff. Ah. Uh -huh. What you working on, Mars Bar? What project? Oh no. Oh. Oh yeah, it might be K Tile Sky. There might actually be those tiles, but they're oh, I guess we can run around and see that. Oh yeah, so there are sky tiles right there. It's just that there's all this ground. Uh-huh. Okay, so we need a different ground style for this area here. Ground styles are set, um, I don't know. Where the heck are ground style set? Sets to none there. Yeah, oh, okay, it gets set at the very beginning, all that. So that's gonna be in the world somewhere. We're gonna be setting ground style. It's mazy, so we might, yeah, we're probably doing it here. Background is none, K ground dirt one. So that's the problem. We need. We need to change this to ground style and create a ground style. So that's just ground style, ground style equals blah. Now if um, if the Z is less than or equal to K man. Oh, that one. Oh, right on. Cool. What's up, Azimuth? Oh, right on. Cool, man. Awesome. I can't wait to hear more about it and see when you guys release it, start sharing about it and stuff. Let's see, I just wrote this function. I don't want to write it again. This is, um, where did I add that? There, this little bit of code right here. World, we need a function in world. So I don't have to duplicate this all the time. Is level, here's another one. Static bool is... Underground entrance. And I guess that should be a float or an int z, not a, not a float z. Awesome. Exactly. So mafia of them. All right, so this method is real simple. Just wanted to duplicate this is underground. Oh, also this area pattern, I've decided I'm gonna name it 
is underground entrance I mean pattern underground entrance even though it's kind of long So he's less than swordsy, greater than blah, 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 blah. Cool. And I just used it um, in area. Here. So we'll go world is under. Man, is it compiling slowly or is this just me? Wow. Man. <laughs> What's up with this? Oh my god, I've never seen it compile that slowly. What's going on right now? Kernel tag, Xcode. Wow, OBS is taking 63%. <laughs> Look at this. Huh. Is that what it is? Well, yeah, it's included in a lot of source code, but normally it doesn't take that long to compile. I haven't changed any of that. Okay, and I'm also going to search for KSword Z to make sure I'm not, I can reuse that method. It's DDoS. Somebody's DDoSing me. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It's cool. We can reuse that. Okay, well, I guess there's just those two places, but that's even two places is a, is a good reason to create a small function. That's, you know, two writing code exactly the same way twice is called coupling. If anybody's uh, never heard that word, that's a really good word to start learning. First of all, because of its, you know, because it has, to, it, in other terms, it basically means sex, but in programming, it means that you've got two pieces of code you've written twice so if you change one you really have to go change the other and that's called coupling it's bad 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 so always if you have two pieces of code that are exactly the same go create a small function reuse it all right um anyways if if this is the uh is underground entrance for the z ground style K ground, let's do tiles one. That'll definitely give it. Exactly, don't repeat yourself. <laughs> um, oh, there's gonna be one more error at least, yeah. Pattern underground entrance. All right, well, yeah, let's see what this looks like with these um, level tiles anyways, because that would kind of might be a cool in intro into this level. It almost would feel like you're in the level when right when you went into the cave.
and that gives us falling tiles. Which is kind of interesting. Um, and those, <laughs> it's kind of interesting to see that those that fire back there too. We definitely need um, a smaller width though. <laughs> Are you really wet like that right now? Did you just come in out from the rain? Oh no! Oh no! Are you talking about the coupling word? Oh really? Yeah, I thought it was yeah. So there's a total there's a Wikipedia on it. But I'm pretty sure there's probably gonna be other other words that are the same thing, right? So the opposite of coupling is cohesion, which is awesome. Tight, loose. <laughs> it's, it's right. This whole, this whole wording, all of this is just awesome. Only programmers would create all these words. <laughs> uh. Uh. Oh yeah, so okay, let's make this strip radius a little little more or less a little more or less. And then we'll set uh, I want to set draw debug real quick. This whole everything is becoming whole. All right. Okay, I like this, but okay, obviously we need some some more width right there. What? Oh, you mean that page or what? What's up, Mighty Nest? <laughs> oh, yeah it is. Yeah it is. Oh, ooh, ooh, now we're getting deep. Yes, yeah, they are, they are, oh. They're not called that around the world? I thought that was, I thought that was totally a worldwide thing. It shows you how myopic I am. So American. Oh, in Italy too? All right, cool. All right, good. I'm glad somewhere else at least. Oh, yeah, the width of um, the stairs tile. Width. This needs to be three. If it's um. Oh yeah. So there. Oh, here we go. Tile. Size dot width times three. You're up too. What's up, Case Rage? Welcome to the stream, man. Oh, in, in Czech Republic too. All right, okay. It is more of a worldwide thing. All right, now they need to be five. Actually, not three. Five. Is it rip? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is so great, all because of the word Coupling. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. We got a nice, a nice wide exit out of this room here.
Oh yeah, that's grass, thousand risk. I gotta get rid of that. <laughs> what what's up, Lighter Thief? <laughs> yeah, check it out. We were having a crazy conversation about coupling, male and female connectors. <laughs> Yeah, okay, get it. let's get rid of that grass. If it's even, is it there? You turn off the setting for debug now. Exactly. Was it, isn't it kind of the same anyways? Yeah, okay, so there, we got some patches of grass that have, that have lodged themselves in the sky over here. Let's get rid of those. And then we'll work on this next area up here where we'll do sort of a different pattern. And, and then we'll put some clouds, some fog. <laughs> oh man, oh. Where's the, there's the create grass method. Great grass, here it is. Splotches get evenly spaced. See, it shouldn't. Uh... <laughs> Where is the create stairs tile? No, sky tile. Where is the sky tile? Sky tiles are K filter sky area. So this should work. This should already be working to do random positions. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Um, how many pieces of grass are there in this thing? This is an unrated stream. We got one piece of grass here, another one here, and one over there. There's a tiny one here. There's one there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's one over there. They're just all over the place. They don't even care about the sky. They're like, I'll be right here. <laughs> That's so true. Mishi, what's up, man? <laughs> it is. It is. What's up, Cohen54? Yeah, yeah, I have done programming for mobiles. And yeah, I got it. I got apps in the App Store and Google Play. You got a certain question about that or something? So, all right. Well, we either step into this method or we just... Let's, no, screw that. Let's just not create grass on these areas for now. So if world is underground entrance for area pause.z return. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna fix that later. I don't wanna fix this. Uh, the, actually the floor panels, the actual tiles there are empty. Those are the one part that's empty. Every, the sky tiles are actually full of sky you know, unintuitively, but yeah, the sky tiles are actually tiles, and then this area I'm running on is totally empty. 
Okay, so let's give that background some some clouds to start with. Um, when you want to go to world back here where it's creating all this stuff, let's do a background style. Start with none. And once again, when we're in this little check here for underground entrance thing, we can set a BG style that includes those clouds. Okay, background. Sky one, maybe? Sky two? I don't know. Yes, every underground level is on a different Z. Yeah, cool. Right on. All right, that, oh, it did work, but it looks too, it's too sky-like, it's too 2D, right? There's, I need a different, I need a different look for this. It needs to be more foggy, less sky. So let's try sky too, I forget what that one is. Yeah, they're all different Z levels. So um, the sword's at negative 10. The first level underground cave entrance is negative 11 through, and then those are go to negative 20. And then the shops are like at negative 50. The other ones are like negative 100 or something. So yeah, everything's got its own Z. So you can easily just tell what area is what by just, you know, checking its Z. Yes, it is. Yesterday we took a poll on the live stream and 44% of people voted for an underground foggy type of effect. It's not supposed to be a sky. It's not supposed to look like that. I'm just trying out these existing skies I have so far. And uh, yeah, so then uh, it's supposed to look like fog. So let's see what Sky 2 looks like. So the other the other um, choices people had yesterday were Straight Up Abyss, which is just blackness, or Lava. Oh, Sky 2 is like a faster moving type sky. But still, it's it's still it's too sky like. Totally the wrong perspective. <laughs> yeah, right. Or it's an entire. Is there? Yeah, it could be a totally giant cave, but no, not supposed to be that. So let's do another sky type. Um, constants background styles. Okay, background, fog. Let's do fog. Fog one. Fog one will have a, oh, we need a ground, uh, or a, a method to create this fog. De Luda meets kindness. The ground is lava. Oh, is this a song? I might not be able to hear this without flagging my video. Cool. All right, I'll have to check this out later. Can't play, can't play no music on the freaking stream except for this. I did find some Twitch music. We can music.twitch.tv you can play, but I don't know if that will work with YouTube. Whether Twitch, Twitch's music is cleared for YouTube's whatever. Yes, right. Cool. Awesome. I'll check them out. Area create sky create. Let's create a, um, kind of like the sky, but, but not. Uh, 
Now we hook up the method in the grounds types. Right? Yeah. There's definitely a lot of micro genres. All right, so now in the create fog one, let's start by creating all these clouds at different Z. So, okay, these are all starting at like 80 Z. We wanted these to start more like an area. Yeah, this, dude, why did I even do it like this? This should be a vector. Vector sprite pointer. Because we're gonna need more, we're gonna need more clouds to be able to cover the whole screen. So I'm gonna do it this way where it's a little bit different. We're gonna do a vector of sprites, let's call it sprites. And then we'll loop over everything, and then for each one we create it and run its animation during the same kind of thing. Yeah, there you go. You got, I've got a really small enum. Oh, uh, we understand each other. It's cool to be able to talk like this. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. For me, there's Justin Bieber slash other. Uh. uh. Area size dot height. Yeah. All right. So, and we'll give it an N of mm, oh, area size dot height. Seal F. Seal F. Area, no, oh, P dot Y over Y step. Or in i equals zero, i is less than n, i plus plus, or plus plus i, however you want to do that. Now we're going to create two clouds each time. Push them both back. Sprites of push back. Address of. Kit sprite blah 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 clouds zero true okay so each one of these clouds has a giantly wide sprite but it has two of them so they can both cycle like this and then one moves back and they both cycle like this like this like this that's how the clouds work so hopefully this technique if I slow these down a lot and put a ton of them I think it can kind of look like fog Wouldn't I like to change my nickname to BC Warrior? Sure, why not? What's up, Corleon? Good night, or hello. Good morning. Good evening. What is it for you? All right, so both of these are cloud zero. Both of them are p dot y minus y step times. Okay, so we had 1.0. Y step, y step, y step. Yeah, okay, so. Let's just give it a position here. Oh, in fact, no, this is really easy. Just p dot y minus equals y step. And then we can just use p. Whoa. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, don't take it too fast. Don't take it too fast. That's the thing with game development. You really want to take it nice and easy. You're gonna because it's a ton of information, right? Especially Unity. Yeah, Unity is pretty complex at first. So try out some other ones too. Try, don't just try out Unity. Try Construct. Try Game Maker. And as soon as your brain feels like it's melting, stop. Just relax. Go watch some TV. Go outside go for a run whatever you do go do it to relax because that will help your brain absorb it yeah an hour per day is good at first did i give you that list of extra credits videos to watch back to zero yeah these are all work work just fine Okay, so that can now be a loop. Or a J equals zero. J is less than one. Wait, did I do that right? These are exactly the same position. How does it do? How does it separate their positions then? That's weird. Oh yeah, Game Maker. Game Maker's a real nice simple one, yeah. count all right this is important too the opacity for them all is going to have to be based on the number so this is setting eight plus a bunch let's go let's do this a little simpler like a uh, max opacity equals 61 or something and then opacity step for each one no I haven't I haven't but I've used the uh, curved ones you know the common like Microsoft ergonomic keyboard or whatever yeah personally I do I do love the the Microsoft curved keyboard or whatever um, I felt it was good for my wrists or whatever, but I do code a lot, so they are kind of weird at first because they have such big keys and stuff. They're so far apart. Oh, the opacity step is going to be based on n, so opacity step is max opacity. Minus mm, eight would be the minimum opacity, and then divide that by n. Now, duration is going to be pretty important too, but let's do max opacity. Minus count shifted down one, yeah, times opacity step. That might need to be times two or something. 
Let's see what we got so far. Hmm. Yeah. I'm definitely not one of those people either. My left finger goes here and there and uh, still the wrong background. All right, why was that? Oh, world probably didn't do it. Yeah, we want fog one here. The duration is really going to be important too to give it the right flow for these because they really shouldn't even move at all. Like if maybe just they should sort of like go back and forth a little actually instead of just moving like their clouds in the sky. Yeah, what happened there? That's really weird. There's some rectangles. Weird rectangles. What art thou? Wow, for some reason this screen actually is making my fan turn on. Okay, let's keep tweaking that so that get these to start looking good. First of all, we need a cool color on them. Color would really help. Let's try setting the color. To K ground or K color dirt, maybe sky, grass, one of those. And let's turn off movement completely so we can dial in what the heck is that? What, what are those weird rectangles we're seeing? So that's too light. Oh, I get it. So one of the um, one of the sprites is on top of the other, or whatever. So if we did less of these, hmm. I'm gonna take off that that the tiles falling for a second because uh, first of all I want it to be faster and second of all I'm not sure if I want the tiles to fall away for this these particular caves I think you might just come into the cave and they already have the ground gone so that is in area creation. Maybe not. Oh, I know it. Where the heck is it? Problem solved? Which one? Where does it make the tiles fall? Falling? Nope. It might be in the ground actually. Create tiles one ground. Just creates falling tiles. Oh yeah, here it is.
triggered. It's all about this this variable called triggered. Where does triggered where does triggered come from? How come I don't remember any of this? Hmm. There, triggered's true. Um, oh, after you've created an area once. Okay, let's make this a little more flexible. Has fall? How about do fall? Do fall equals not world is underground entrance area pause dot z and oh, so not triggered right so we haven't triggered this area and it's not one of these underground entrances then we're going to do the fall so triggered do fall so we're in right here and do fall Oh, this is um, if not do fall. All right, there. Hopefully that does some, just puts the sky immediately visible. The fog, I should say. Yes, good. Okay, now we gotta keep on working on this fog. Definitely the wrong color. Fog one. Let's try the sky color. Sky is usually the color for these background fogs and skies and stuff. Whoops, okay, sky dirt. <laughs> Man, you can tell I'm having one of those days. Okay, color, sky. Mighty Nest, what's up? Uh, any plans for Vita port? Yes, there are. PlayStation 4 and Vita are basically the same thing. So, and I've already been, already been saying PlayStation 4 and Xbox One will come if I can get the funds or the game succeeds financially, commercially, or whatever. Then yeah. What's up, Nano? There's no K color sky? I thought there was. Oh, it's water. Water is the same thing as sky. I'm working on this entrance here for um, this level. Ah, uh, see, there's a much better tone for those clouds, even though they look really weird because they're just squares or rectangles right now. But anyways, yeah, so Nano, I'm working on this underground entrance to the le this level here. So this is sort of one of the areas, right, where you'll, you'll find this and be like, whoa, what's this? You go in here and you go up here and there'll be an entrance. So I'm just working on these areas down here to add some sky slash abyss slash foggy foggy abyss sort of what if this was minus a hundred In fact, let's just get the area, let's get the next area above this going. That sounds more fun right now. You're trying not to starve, don't starve, cool. How do you like that game? I haven't tried it.
Pedro, yeah, the game, the entire game is procedurally generated. Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean don't starve? Wasn't it procedurally generated? <clears throat> ah, sorry. Okay, um... Oh yeah, there's a pattern that I already have for the level... Where'd it go? It's not the level entrance. It's right after the level, um, or like right after uh, pattern level. Really, is it level random? Yeah, you like it? Cool. Oh yeah, it's pattern goal. All right, so let's do that for the other pattern. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does, but it's not that great. It all really does, it just has this, tells you whether a file's modified. It's really not that awesome. Yeah, I have seen Don't Starve's art, but I haven't seen it in a while. Oh yeah, I totally remember them seeing when this was first coming out. Definitely looks like a, just a rad game, for sure. It's on Steam, right? I'm not sure if it's on my list. Yeah, here we go. I gotta add this one to my list. Oh, I added to my list. What happened to the list thing? Oh, why are you always logging me out, Steam? Keep me logged in forever, Steam. I'm always me on this computer. Always. Lord, what is up with that? Okay, let's just go straight to the other pattern. For pattern, underground entrance. Okay, so this is gonna be if, this is the highest area with entrance to dungeon else. <laughs> Don't starve together is another one. It totally depends, Pedro. It depends on the what what the game. And some games will claim that they are and some games you know, some games will claim that where it's totally different each time, you know, like I don't know. It's hard to say. It's kind of a term that's thrown around a little bit too much these days for games that kind of are but aren't really. But then again, this one, you know, there's a lot of them that truly are, and it's freaking amazing. And I love I love those kind of games because it's a new experience each time, you know. Hey, what's up, Valve Corp? Here. Remember me forever. How many times do I gotta do that? Oh now I forgot all about Don't Starve. Come on, Steam. Get with it. You need you need a higher Mars of power for your website. Add to my wish list. That's all I wanted to do. So there's a separate game called Don't Starve Together. Is that, is that true?
Wow. Okay, so there is a totally separate game called Don't Starve Together. Hey. Double your marketing, double your fun. <clears throat> That's right, it is. Down to the tile. Procedurally generated, down to the tile. So is um, an amazing game called Lena's Inception. You guys haven't seen this one? Lena's Inception is a totally procedurally generated Zelda game, sort of a Game Boy Zelda style. Definitely worth checking out if you guys haven't seen this game. Lena's Inception, pretty cool. If you like Zelda games. Oh, it's included in the main game? Oh. Ah. All right, we're going to do a, this strip radius on the outside. There. Ah. Oh, we need to do, we need to stop it off on the top. Or Y is greater than H2. Oh, no. Oh, no worries, man. What's a procedural gen in game? It's, man, it's, uh, once again, that's hard to say because it depends on the game. But um, it just means that the game is created from code. So, for example, in a regular game, right, you, this screen, for example, in a regular game that's not procedurally generated, this screen right here would be created by a level editor guy. Somebody, somebody would actually go and draw all these tiles, draw this world. It's called bespoke. You know, you're creating, it's, or like, you can think of it like handcrafting or whatever. You're crafting each and every level to be exactly how you want it. But then there's there's pluses and minuses that the pluses are it's every level is going to be very human. The minuses are you can't create very many levels. You're limited on your time unless you have a, like hundreds of people working on the game. So procedurally generated means the, that the programmer who creates the game writes some algorithms that actually create these tiles. Like you just saw me creating an algorithm which created this pattern here in the middle of a circle. And, and this sort of rectangle on the bottom, which created this area. What that means is that it can be really flexible. So the code can decide, you know what? I want the, the path in the middle to be a little skinnier or a little thicker, or I want an X shape, or I want a circle, or I want a triangle, or whatever. You can do so much with procedurally generating things. So next, let's, let's get these flames to be in, the, in like cool positions. Uh. Yeah. What do I think is the best environment for procedural generation? Man, what you mean? 
Welcome to the stream, JList, by the way, and uh, please clarify. So let's do a vector of light positions. We'll do vector V3I. Now each one of these is going to be this is W2 minus 1. This is, oh wait, no, W2. Yeah, this is fine here. And then this is H2 minus 1. Same thing for this other one here. What's wrong with this? Mm -hmm. Oh, programming environment? Oh, it doesn't matter. You can create it. You can create a procedurally generated game with any programming environment. Yeah, cool. Right on. Yeah, it totally. It totally depends on whatever programming language you're familiar with. You can literally do procedurally generated games with any programming language, any tools. It doesn't matter. It just depends on your skill as a programmer, really. Yeah, really. Yeah, Mars Power's got it here. Different, different way to say it. Just an algorithmic problem. It's, it's, it's a matter of creating an algorithm, and any programming language can create a, an algorithm. So, oh, is there any? Yeah, I mean, it. This depends on what you're. Are you talking about getting started in games in general, or are you talking about getting started in in really advanced? Because C plus is sort of like. It's a little bit more of like mo moderate to advanced level programming. Yeah, I agree. Python is a great language to start with. Or C, definitely. Yeah, I would agree with Arcane here. But it's only, it also depends on what it will end up like. Because what, what your end result is, what you want to do with what, whatever you're programming. Yeah. <laughs> See, and we're all opinionated. Everybody's got an opinion here on what programming language is best to learn. So that's what the thing is. You really got to find your own. And JList, I'm just going to go ahead and give you like uh, my whole beginner's advice here. This is um, first thing you want to do when you're getting started in game development is watch all these videos with from extra credits. They're so good. Making your first game. Yes, yeah, learning C-sharp is a great idea. It totally is, because you can use Unity with that, and, or, oh, there's other, you know, there's, what's the other thing, X and A. Cool. So I'm gonna make a little plus sign on all these uh, pillars here. K tile none. So this is just gonna be y is negative one, y is less than or equal to one. 
x is negative 1, listener equal to 1. So there, that'll create sort of a plus sign with the fire tile or whatever in the middle. Hopefully that looks better. Yeah. <laughs> oh, whoops. It only did one of them because we want to do W2 plus W2 over 2 plus 1. And also, if x plus y or abs. I think that'll make it a plus sign. Either that or it's abs x plus y. Yay, C plus plus. What's up, Coder Cameron? There, all right, we got plus signs. Yay. And flames and all that. And that's cool how they connect right here. All right, so next we'll keep on working on this background to get that to look good. I wonder what's going on. This is so weird how that. This transition looks really, really crazy weird, right? There's something flickering and flashing, but we'll get that fixed. All right. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, man. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's great. Not only is it speed, but it's portable. Uh, no, Coder Cameron, I'm using Cocos 2DX. Okay, so back to working on these background clouds. I'm gonna get these, or background fog. We want this to be foggy. In fact, I might even just skip these whole Yeah, let's try a totally different idea here. I'm gonna try some poofy clouds instead. Oh, there's a gradient, really? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Keep keep it slow at first when you're when you're learning those kind of things. You don't want to learn too much each day. You want to absorb each um, each bit of information, you know? This is blending black. We want to blend it with the sky color, though. Oh, yeah, we already got that. Get hue from K color water. What's up with that? Shouldn't that create a gradient? Those sets are to render. Oh, it creates a render tile for the background. Yeah, we don't have any gradient at all. We want to let's get a gradient going. That'll start making it look cool. Oh. Let's try this. Auto C. I wonder if it's the, the one color or the other color, or if it's just that the position of this layer gradient is in the wrong place. That's what's wrong with it. Yeah, so it's we still got no gradient here. Kind of like it with this black abyss, though. It's kind of cool. Um, okay, I wonder if we created. Wait, why do we have two entities? Q 
Where's that second egg? And what if we just add that straight to the area layer? And set it to like negative a thousand or so. It's weird. We got no color here. Wait, 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 am I in the right? Yeah, I'm, I should be in the right. Let's set a break point and make sure this is the right. Oh, negative 2002, hmm. We're not even using that. Okay, yeah, we're getting into this method. Pushing back an entity to hold all this. Yeah, it does, right? That's why I want to add some fog to it, a little bit of fog. I mean, it's supposed to be like this. It's supposed to be ominous and moody and dark and all that, but I think a, a tiny gradient and some very transparent fog would really, really help this. Give it more depth, you know? Right now, with that black, it just looks flat. You can't really tell how deep it is. So if we give it just a little bit of fog, and, and make it look really low, it'll look way deeper. Oh, man, this is curious, why? Oh, maybe it's that. And this should work. Oh, the render component here is in the bottom should be shouldn't be half a pixel that's wrong no, let's do this let's make it all totally white or like green to something else green to red this should work hmm I know that's a that's something I wrote for this game, and then I published it for free. It's called Entity Foo, and you can totally use it in your game too if you want. Oops, let me show you the link. Nothing. All right, well, what if we had a regular layer, kit, layer color, parent, render, dot sprite, color, Color for B. There, so let's see if we even have a red color if we just do a regular layer. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it's, yeah. I mean, it is kind of like it's not being rendered, but it could be a million things. Okay, so there. We have a regular layer perfectly working, but the layer gradient isn't working.
I wonder what layer color is doing. Oh, it's the camera mask. Uh, I forgot about these camera masks. Masks is all right. Cool. So we, this should work now. Set the camera mask for this baby. Layer set camera mask to um, kits. Get camera flag. Did it? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to spook you guys out. It's it's too early. Halloween's like not till next month. There we go. All right, cool. We have a gradient, even though it's like super bright and happy. Um, at least we have a color gradient now. So, all right, let's start making this a little more. It's kind of interesting to see that color gradient. It's like, woo, yay, happy times. <laughs> uh, oh, sweet, you got a MacBook Pro? Sweet, man. Uh, yeah, the lag script, I do have a recommendation. Um, cause I wrote a book myself on called Ghost 2 dx So this is a totally biased recommendation for you here. So you might want to look for some other stuff, but, um, here's my book on called Ghost 2 dx So that's right. That's cool. Let's do C1, C2. C2 is going to be C1, like with the supply tone. Like really, really low. Same thing with C1. but a little less low. So there we got C, C1, so we'll do C. We get rid of all this stuff we don't need anymore now. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna delete all those clouds, but I'm gonna keep that code for a second. So C1 or C.R, C.G, C.B. We don't need this stuff either. Good night, Liar Thief. <laughs> All right, Marza. Good night, man. I know it's late for you, too. All right, we're getting closer. Closer to... Yeah. But this is still too big, and the gradient will need to fade from one color to another. So we need to do a different size for this thing. So it only goes for half the screen and, and goes a gradient that way. And then another half the screen is the reverse gradient. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can do a, a layer gradient with the size. You can't? Wow, that's weird. I thought you could do a size for layer gradient. Set vector, set end opacity. You, there's gotta be a way to change its size. It's trying to change its size afterwards manually with uh, layer set. Yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. Yep, I'm doing two, I'm gonna do two gradients now so that the transition is right. So set, come. That compressed interpolation. Hmm. I don't even know what that is. 
whether or not the interpolation will be compressed in order to display all the colors of the gradient both in canonical and non-canonical vectors. Be all true. Let's try false. See if that makes a better gradient. Yes, there were. I don't know what's up with that right now, JList, but I'm gonna. I'll fix it at some point. Uh, first, I'm gonna focus on this background and the um, and getting the cl the fog to work. So this will this will look a lot better. But then I'll go and fix the actual transition. Did that work? Did that actually comp make them look better? No, it didn't really look any better with this. I'll turn that off for now. But okay, what I want to do now is do two gradients. One on the bottom, one on the top, one, the other one on top is the opposite. So this, I think you can set content size. Yeah, okay, that works, cool. Yeah, the way I pronounce gradient drives you crazy. How do you pronounce it? Gradient? Gradient, gradient, gradient. I couldn't, I don't know if I could get used to that. So we'll create two gradients. I said gradients again. Yeah, you, you mean gradient, right? Is there an official way to say that? Am I officially saying it wrong? Gradient. 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 <laughs> It sounds like it's gradient. Careful, Boost, what's up? This is the Cambridge Dictionary, though. Oh, how to pronounce in US English? Gradient. <laughs> it is gradient. 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 All right, I'm totally wrong. I'm so wrong. I've been wrong my whole life. Oh, Whew. dang, man. What is this is a new day for me. I learned how to pronounce gradient today. Hell, the other day I learned how to spell psychedelic. I didn't know psychedelic was spelled the way it was, is. Wrecked for sure. Gradient. I gotta say it like a million times or else I'll forget. Do I? It's Cambridge. Is it Cambridge? Is it Cambridge or Cambridge? <laughs> oh man. You know, I'm just gonna trust you guys. You tell me how to say Cambridge. I'm not gonna look it up on the internet. If I equals one, swap C, C2. Gradient. Oops. That's right. I know my life will never be the same from now on. Ginger Kiwi, oh yeah, what's up? And don't join the herd. Thanks, Azenris. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, wow. Porno. Porn. <laughs> Porn cat on man anal. <laughs> oh, I might have to just subscribe to this one. I really need to learn how to pronounce 
pronunciation manual myself. Cambridge. Yeah, Google Translate's a good one, right? That even works for foreign languages too, which is great because, you know, you can learn that way, learn some stuff and stuff. Okay, so if it's I equals one, player set position. Come on, give me a set position. Oh, just set position Y. A size dot height. Gradient. Oh, gradient. See? Oh my god. See, I'm going to have to say this like a billion times before I can ever get it right. Gradient. So what's the German word for gradient? Why didn't that work? Oh, it did work. Oh, okay, it worked. Sweet. All right, cool. So now we got a, a gradient transition, but they need to be darker to give it more of blackness. This should be like almost zero. So let's try 0 0.1 and 0 0.05. Yeah, all right, cool. Thanks, Ijo Kiwi. <laughs> Cambridge. Wait, so what, how do you say it then? Wait, you, say, you said yeah to... Um... But how do you say it, Ginger Kiwi? <laughs> really? <laughs> das Gradient? <laughs> you just have to shout it loud that's all there is huh hey look at that that looks pretty good this is dark blue and that can change based on this area's sky or water color so if this area had a different water color this would look totally different cool all right so now let's give it some fog some like actual like foggy particles that will look i'm thinking of fuzzy the fuzzy gradi gradient Circle, circle gradient. It's Dur gra gradient. Cambridge. All right, Cambridge. All right, got it, man. It's Cam Cambridge and gradient. Both of those are a long A's. Is that right? What's that weird? I don't know if this is the right word. Are you trying to make me say a funny word? I'll say it anyways. Der Farbverlauf. Yeah, Mighty Ness, eventually I'm going to have that, yeah. Falling off the edge. In fact, I don't think that was on my ideas list. I refined the ideas list today, so let's do. Let's add that to the list. Falling off edges, that's definitely on the list to do. Um, maybe a parallax effect, I'm not sure, because I, I just did a parallax effect. Like, check us out, There's um, if I did Sky 2... Here, I'll change this back to sky, like sky one or sky two, and you'll see a, a you'll see a uh, a parallax effect, but it doesn't. I don't know if it looks that good because it gives you the feeling that you're kind of up in the sky. But this is and it's too it's at the wrong angle almost. So there's some clouds moving around, right? And they're just at the totally at the wrong angle. So I I, I either need to totally mess with that kind of that type of style for sky or or yeah try some other parallax effect maybe more subtle par parallax effect or something yeah <laughs> oh Second item down from from the left. You you're saying use this great gradient. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. Well, um, yeah. First, I want to try some fog, but yeah, I'll uh. Let me see if I can. Can I just save this to my desktop? 
consider using that. I'd have to do like a bunch of different gra gradients, but that would work. Okay, let's add some fogginess, foggy stuff. I guess we could go random with this. Give it an N of mm, maybe 32 of these, a lot of these. Loop over all those. Create a bunch of foggy particles. Let them do some stuff. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I take that as a big compliment. They're they're awesome game, of course. What's weird is I hadn't even heard about Hyper Light Drifter until I started streaming and making this game. And then I found out we had a lot in common. But there's a lot of big differences, too. Hyper Light Drifter is very bespoke and handcrafted. This game is procedural. Even though, um, even though the procedural algorithms in this are kind of handcrafted in this game, but yeah. So, uh, but they're they're a freaking fantastic looking game, and I can't wait to play their game. Um, other games I can't wait to play are Aider, um, Below, Children of Morta, Axiom Verge. I can't wait to play. Even though I have no, I don't own yet that one yet. Oh yeah, but that is really a word. But you you meant wind. I see what you're saying. All right, let's create a particle. Sprite blend null pointer file name circle gradient true. Pause. Uh, here's where we're going to get random, I'm thinking. Back to DRANDF01 times area size dot width size dot width. DRANDF01 times area size dot I anchor back to um, yeah, this is 0 0.5, so this is anchor, middle, and parent is going to be the render sprite. Z, we'll put it 1 above. Okay, so let's see what we got so far. Actually, we probably wanted to set these to be really set opacity down pretty low. Glad to see someone using I for the for loop indexes. Oh, yeah, totally right. I love I. Who doesn't like I for index? Oh, whoops, fog dot. <laughs> right? So these particles aren't going to move, but, oh, wow. Oh my God, that really worked though. Oh, gee, dude, just giving them a little bit of movement will be really sweet. Okay, let's do some really slow movement. Um, fog dot run action. Repeat forever. Create. All right, Arcane man. Good night, man. If you're going to sleep, good night, man. So this is actually going to be a sequence. Sequence, create, null pointer. It will move by and then move by again. Oh yeah, I will do that. I'll add a second layer on top. So there'll be a fog below, fog above. Good call, man, good call. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, so I'll do, a, I'll do a run of 32 that's on top and run this on the bottom. 
let's start with doing doing this background one. We could even do different depths. Like I could do a far, really far ones away and whatever. And make the ones in front really more transparent. Yeah, this is gonna get fun once this once this starts uh, fleshing out and looking better. Uh, so in the also these actions, I want to ease these. Ease sign. In out create. I'm thinking the duration is going to be pretty long for these. Let's do start with 10 seconds in a delta position, random. Also, oh, let's do let this do like the delta. Delta is going to be D rand F times um at most four pixels maybe. D rand F. And then on the Y, we want to go K, I don't have like a KY factor or something like that. <laughs> there you go. I tried that once in when I was in high school. I tried to sleep all day and I got pretty far. I was like, I got to be sleeping till like 2 p.m. I was like, yes, I slept in till 2 p.m. today. Where's that Y factor thing? Y move system Y factor. So this will be delta, and then over the same period we'll move minus delta, which should I think that's it can just go delta dot negate or no, I think you want to do minus. But does that work? I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Nice. Yeah. That's kind of what I want to create. Yeah, some kind of fog effect. Like one of the greatest games ever. Uh, they're moving too slow for sure. I see one. I see them moving tinily a little bit. So let's try a second on both those. Yeah, so that movement's kind of just too too predictable. Yeah, they, they are moving up and down too. It's just that it's multiplied by this move system factor thing. So let's try a bigger movement and doing a delta two. Which should help it. And then also changing the timing so this is um i guess it doesn't really matter we'll do a second plus drand f01 for all these so adding a little bit of random timing into every one of these steps is really going to help each one of these particles look a little different Oh yeah, cool. Mishi. Yes, yes, they do. Not not completely random. It's just whatever memory was at that address will actually in the stack usually usually that stack heap that you're actually you accessing there. So, what what still it's memory, right? So whatever number was actually at that address, that's um that's whatever the number is for you. Yeah, and these ease actions really aren't helping. Um, either it should be ease, so it eases 
out in yeah okay so it needs to go out in in out out we out in out in yeah out in out in and still they're really not looking that foggy yet <clears throat> Yeah, I could do that too. All right, so now that it's doing that, we can add some overall movement to it to move it, make like, like Code or Camera was saying, make it move left and right. So I think I already have an animation for that. It's called Animate BG Movement for this node. The vector is going to be a size dot width period. Let's try 10 seconds at first. The index for this. Not sure, but we'll try zero at first. Oh, and this needs to be zero. That should make it so it goes part of the screen and moves back, part of the screen moves back. I don't know. Mm, it looks like it moved them. Oh, what was that? All of a sudden, they're there for like a tenth of a second. Yeah, I, I don't. I guess I'm not understanding how this algorithm is working just yet. So it starts off by moving its position. Oh yeah, this is really isn't what we want. All right, Momir, see you, man. How long do I got left today? I'm kind of getting hungry myself. So yeah, I'm I normally stream for about two hours, so I'll give it another like ten minutes. We'll see what we can do to make these foggy clouds look better in these ten minutes. I'm thinking it should start with so to give it this horizontal movement, we're gonna use something like this. And but we wanna start with the position. Use P. Now we'll move by over the period of 10 seconds or five seconds maybe, or whoa. Actually we need an X percent for this. So float XP equals P dot X over area size dot width. So this is going to be, so the, well, we'll need a const float duration or period. Period is probably more of a accurate term for that. Let's try 10 seconds for the overall thing, right? And so then the, the one move by, it's going to be period times 1.0 f minus xp and then we're going to move two in this in the blink of an eye we're moving all the way back to zero and the same y and then we're going to create another period 
of movement here. So we'll start with, okay, so we want to move the area size dot width times 1.0 minus XP, zero there on the Y. Yeah, that's right. And then the next thing we want to do is the period times just XP, and we move area size that width times XP. Cross your fingers that works. I'm not even going to check it. I'm just going to run it, see if it works. Oh, wait, wait. I want to get rid of this BG movement call down here, which is just messing it all up. Okay, let's hope that works. Basically, what it's doing is it moving, it starts randomly in its random position, and then it moves to the edge of the screen, moves itself back, moves on to more. All right, that's definitely way too quick, right? Wow. I wonder how it's blooming so much like that. How did it get into a perfect line? Wow, that is crazy. I don't know how it got into like a, a line like that. I guess probably because it has something to do with this period being exactly the same. It's random positions and all that. Hmm. Well, yeah, definitely too fast for sure. And welcome to the stream today, Dodge Whale. Let's start by slowing them down. And then we'll make them so they actually stay random. Stay in, they gotta stay in their random positions. They can't just bunch up into a diagonal line like that. So I don't know, we gotta figure that math out. I think it's just moving. Um, See, they start out pretty cool. Oh, 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 okay. I got the math for this. Period times, this should be period times a half. This should be period times a half. This should just be area size that width times a half. There, they'll totally maintain their positions. And this can just be a move by, create, and it, yeah, blink of an eye. We want to go area size. Oh, oh, this is why it did the, that's why it did a diagonal line because I did P.X right there. It's supposed to be P.Y. And this would be width times two there. And now we don't even need XP. Okay, let's see if that worked. We should have some clouds. They should start randomly. They should move across the screen uniformly. Maybe with a little bit of randomness we'll throw in later. Oh, it looks like they're not moving. Whoa. Oh, maybe it was just supposed to be, oh yeah, this is supposed to be times one, not two. Hello, Metamon7, welcome to the stream. Uh, no, this is C++. The game engine is Cocos 2DX. This game is called Songbringer. It's coming out on Steam in January, and it's a procedurally generated Zelda-like game. And there's a lot more info on the information for this Twitch, if you just click on the info for it. Oh, that's supposed to be negative. Oh, no wonder. These are all leaping like a ton. That should be negative width. And oh, this, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This needs to be a whole width. Oh, I guess we can start with half. This isn't gonna be totally right though. But at least the math is gonna work out to be 
should be accurate now. But it, it won't quite get some of them all the way to the edge. So. See what I mean? Yeah, so that I guess that needs to be this needs to be times one, this needs to be times one, and this needs to be times negative two. Alright man, good night. I could just make them fade in and out, yeah, dodge wheel. But I think I'm gonna try making them move all the way off the screen and then fade it, come in from all the way off the screen too, so. So now they're moving kind of fast because they've got the same, twice the amount of movement in. That's so crazy how they fade out like that. I don't know how they're doing that. Okay, okay, let's get a size of movement. Instead of doing twice the, the size, we'll do just movement. Oh, let's do VEC2. Movement is going to be area size. Movement plus equals VEC2. This is going to be the size of the circle gradient. Which is, oh man, what's the circle gradient size? Yeah, that's what I'm trying, J list. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to dial in the exact size that they need to move so that they, they go just off screen and then the other side they come back just off the screen and they move and they just eventually this will look good. It's just as this is how algorithms work. You kinda just at least how I do algorithms, I just like play with them until they work. Oh, it's their opacity that gives them, wow. Gradient, gradient, gradient. So the movement at x needs to be plus equals fog dot get content size dot width times two. There, now we can do a movement here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, right? That's all you gotta do. Just mess with the math until it looks cool. Oh, and it was moving by its Y, no wonder. Oh man, this would be negative movement. All right, there, now it's a lot more simple, right? Oh wait, this should be times a half again. Come on, work, come on, work, because I want to get some dinner. I'm hungry, my belly's rumbling. Ah, 
Dang it. There should already be clouds on that left side. Uh. Oh, I guess it was the XP thing then, because the X percentage would have given me the or given the um the fog some right because we we need to move to one edge. All right, so let's try that. Float XP equals p dot x over area size dot width. Or actually, maybe move movement dot x. No, Aries said that with. Yes, no, yes, no. All right, so then period is going to be 1.0 minus XP movement times 1.0 minus XP. So this one's XP. Here's the hoping that works. Come on, work. I seriously need to get some dinner. Ah. Uh. Oh yeah, maybe it did. I think it might have worked. There's just a kind of a little bit of gap there because because of the extra size. Huh, so if I didn't do that, see if that works. Oh man, this totally depends on your language and everything. And I and sorry I don't know any t tutorials, but I would Google it. And what's what language are you using, by the way? I might know some tricks to make your, it run faster in that language, but it also it totally depends on what your algorithm looks like, you know. Because in in some languages you can you can get away with speed and performance increases in some things, you know. There, oh, that's working, but it's like a little bit too. Yeah. Oh wait. Oh yeah, it does need to move a little bit more, but not. Maybe if we just did width. How many tiles do you have? If you're if you're using C plus plus, it should be fine. Uh, Iron Koki, what's up, man? Hey, thanks for your suggestions on the frame buffer the other day. That totally was right. That's what I ended up doing is using the frame buffer technique. Um, and you might be right. This is looking pretty good, though. I'm not seeing them blink in or out, and they have nice spacing. I like this a lot, actually. But let's try that with... um. Oh, you have 20 and 48 tiles. All right. Yeah, I, I, you shouldn't, it shouldn't take forever to generate only 2,000 tiles unless you have a really slow computer. So, all right, Koki, and I'm going to try that. Movement.x. Let's see if that makes it any better. Oh yeah, there you go, Mighty Ness. Thanks for that suggestion. Are you doing that, Jaylist? Are you are you making sure that your tiles are hidden, that are that are off screen? Yeah, so that didn't work with the movement.x because it's it's like uh, 
it was making them pop in and out. So let's try that again. I also want to change the opacity for these guys to be random and something based like 8 plus VRAND F01 times 24. So that's anywhere from 8 to 32 for the opacity on these guys. You're doing that? That's so weird that you would have slowdown. You really shouldn't with only 2,000 tiles. I don't know, man. Uh, well, I'll tell you this. You should be able to definitely get some huge performance increase out of that. So wait, this time there's a bunch of space between them. Why is there all of a sudden some space? Maybe it was my DRAND, throwing in an extra DRAND there. 300 frames a second? Whoa! Yeah, it's, so it's just a startup. Okay, right. Well, that's that's again, I don't know. What, la what engine are you using? Oh, uh, okay. You're generating, hmm, yeah, so you should definitely, you should definitely check that, right? Set some time points, set some, profile it or set some time points in your log statements or whatever to time exactly what, break it down, make sure it's not, make, is it, is it the map or is it like, um, right, is it your map or is it you're generating your seed or what? Oh, that's a good point, right? Are you on Windows? If you're on Windows, that could be way slower in debug mode. Wow, that's awesome, Coder Cameron. That's pretty. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, so as soon as I put in that extra random number, I get this big gap, but maybe that's because there's not enough tiles. Yeah, definitely good job, man. Yeah. Nope, we're still getting this. Okay, wait, let's try that with the movement.x then again. No, but that will be over. Oh, oh it would need to be movement.x minus the percentage. So it need to be p.x. Minus, um, fog dot get content size dot width times a half. Oh, uh, huh. And what, what kind of map are you using, by the way? Are you using unordered map or an ordered map? Yeah, that creates more of a gap that way. Yeah, that doesn't work. But it might be just I have the math wrong. Anyways, this is about it for today's stream, you guys. I gotta get some dinner. But um I'll I'll do a little recap of what's what I'm working on today. So if you guys can have a look at the game. Some of the some of you guys are new here. Cool. Yeah, right on. Yeah, good job doing these, doing the same GL call. Yeah, so this game is called Songbringer. Um, it's a procedurally generated Zelda-like game. 
Um, there's lots of different items and stuff in this game, in this in this world. You find them. You can combine them too, so you can combine items and create other other items. You can throw your top hat, for example. Um, you got this nano sword thing. It's a sci-fi theme. This is the this is the nano sword with the fire upgrade, so you can like shoot these fire projectiles out of it. It's, it's called the flaming ghost sword. There's lots of different ghost swords. There's a lightning sword. There's like um, fire sword. You got these cactuses too you can eat, which give you these psychedelic powers, and you can see through, find secret walls and stuff with this. Oh, look, a dead end. Sweet, a dead end. <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, this is what this game's like, basically. So anyways, I'm working on these underground caves today. And uh, yeah, this is going to be the end of my video here. I'm going to shut it down. Um, but I'll be back tomorrow. So I stream pretty much, oh no, actually tomorrow I'm not going to be back. We're probably going to have to a day where my girl and I are going to Shakespeare in the park. So but anyways, I'm working on the this little um, underground entrance to a, a level. So this is what levels look like so far. There's going to be lots of different level styles eventually in the game, but for now there's only one type of level style for these. Oh, that got messed up. Z for these statues got messed up. That's weird. But yeah, that's the game Song Ringer. Um, it's coming out on Steam in January, and um, that's it. So, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow, or maybe the next day, and that's it for today's stream. Cool. Yeah, the inventory is, I'm, I'm upgrading that and making it better. So it separates the uh, passive items. So your gear and skills are going to be on the bottom. So things that you're, are passive, like the Ghost Sword, for example, is a passive item. That'll appear on the bottom list once I get it working. Later, guys.